Hey, today I'd like to welcome you to Doris's Kitchen, and today we're going to make cream puffs. Okay, I'm going to turn our burner on seven. But the first thing you need to do when you want to make cream puffs is turn your oven to 400. Now, the oven has to be completely cooked by then uh, for when you put it in and everything. But you'll be really surprised at how easy it really is to make cream puffs and make a special treat for your family. Okay, first we're going to add just a half a cup of water. There you go, half a cup of water. Then you're going to have one-fourth cup of butter, which is four parts. You know, if you look on your butter thing, count four, and that's what you need. Okay, and that's it for that. Now what we're going to do is wait for this to come to a boil, and then it goes real fast and easy from there. So, in the meantime, I will show you a few fillings. You know, they have the filling in the recipe book and everything, which is very time consuming, but this is very, very easy. So you have a half a cup of water, one fourth butter, which is melting. You're going to need that to come to a big roaring boil. You know, where you're going to see the steam coming up and everything. Then you're going to add a simple half a cup of flour. Then it's going to roll right up into a ball. And then when you got it into a ball real good, turn your burner off, add your two eggs, stir it right up so it's like mashed potato kind of and stuff. And then you just scoop it right up and it makes six uh, cream puffs, okay? And you'll just scoop it up in like spoons of this, okay? So right now my butter is still melting because the butter all has to melt and the water has to come to a roar. You can see some of the steam start to come. My oven is heating at 400 and this you'll only be cooking for about 35 to 40 minutes, okay? Depending on your oven, but make sure you go at least the 35. Because if you don't, uh, and you see it start to brown, and you say, okay, it's cooked enough, I can smell it, and it's starting to turn brown on the top, you don't want to take it out before the 35 minutes. Because if you do, when it starts to cool down, your cream puff will just collapse. Because it's going to show that the yolk and, and the eggs and everything inside were not fully cooked, and the whole thing with the flour and everything weren't fully cooked. Okay, now for those of you who are diabetics, this works out really good. You just don't put the extras on it because if you notice, all we're adding is a half a cup of water, one fourth butter, a half a cup of flour, and our two eggs. There are no sugar in here. And what you can do for your filling, uh, because you need a treat too, you know, just because you're diabetic don't mean you can't have treats. But you can get the Jello that's sugar-free and fat-free, okay? And that's what you can fill your cream puff with, okay? So just because you're a diabetic don't mean you can't have the treats too. And if you accidentally buy it like I do because I don't wear my glasses when I go to the store, hey, that's okay. You know, we need to cut down on sugar, right? <laughs> Okay, but if you're not a diabetic, uh, after you fill it with either uh, the vanilla pudding or you can fill it with the whipped cream, then you can add a little bit of confectionery sugar on top. Now it's boiling and everything, but my butter's not all the way melted, so we're still going with it. You can add some confectionery sugar or you can use, this is my favorite, I like it with the vanilla pudding, and I like the Hershey's syrup. Okay, and then if you have crushed walnuts, you can add that on top. And this makes a good little treat for like Saturday night if you're going to watch a movie with the family. Fix up a nice little treat instead of always popcorn, and they'll really appreciate it. Okay, so you see now, it's just boiling. Put it back on now for a second because I took it off to show you. Okay, all you have is your half a cup of water and one-fourth butter. You know, it just takes the little ingredients around the house to do this. Okay, now I'm going to turn this off and immediately add my flour. 
And you'll see the flour wants to stick to the bottom right away. But you need to stir it right up. Stir it up. As you see, look, it's coming right into a ball. And you may wonder why I use such a big pan. It's because you really need to hurry up and work this, okay? Here you go. You got your ball. Move it off the burner. Add your two eggs. Okay, and then you need to stir in those two eggs right into your ball. Just as fast as you possibly can. And that's why I use a big pan. You know, you figure, okay, it's only a bunch of small little ingredients. Well, it's because of this part here. You know, because you do have to go fast with this. I heard my oven beep, so I know that my oven's already hot. And the whole thing is that you've got to get your egg inside of what you made kind of like a ball. You don't want to cook it on the stove because then you'll be like cooking scrambled eggs, you know, with a ball of flour. And that's why you remove it from the heat and then just blend it right in real quickly. Otherwise, you're going to be cooking fried egg and you'll definitely see it that way. Now see how it kind of looks pretty much like... Uh, mashed potatoes. We've got it all blended in. There's no extras hanging out. And now it's a matter of this little bit dividing it up into six. So you just spoon out a spoon like this, okay? do this as quickly as you possibly can because it needs to get in the oven. It's already all hot here and it really needs to get in that oven. Okay, now this one could have used a little more here. Try to make them all even so they cook at the right speed for everybody. All right. And now we just place them in the oven. We want 35 minutes, so it'll be 11.45 when this batch is done, when I need to start looking at it. Okay? And here we have our cream puffs. Ta-da! So you're going to want to just open that up a little bit. Okay. I'm going to add some of my pudding. I already pre-made my pudding. Go. Look at that. Mmm. Yum, yum. And I'll add a little bit of chocolate on this one. There we go. And I'll start another one here. And you can make different variety depending how people like it, you know. Because if you you're diabetic, of course, you're going to want the pudding. All right. Now, this one I'm just going to leave plain, but I'll add some of my confectionery sugar on top of this one. You can add some confectionery sugar on top of your chocolate, too, if you want. Okay. Now, let's do this one here with Cool Whip. If you want, you know, you can, you can use your imagination. You can have whatever you want inside of these. Because sometimes, you know, you're going to want to put a little bit of... Because uh, a lot of people like, you know, Dunkin' Donuts and stuff like that. And you can't afford the treats and all that. So, you might want to add a little bit of uh, jam. Now, this one here is the whipped cream. I'll add a little bit of chocolate.
Hello. Welcome to Doris's Kitchen. Now today, because it's going to be Thanksgiving, we're going to make our famous pumpkin pie. Now there's two ways of doing it, the regular way, or because a lot of people during the holidays are trying to lose weight, you can also just put some of your pie fillings right into a Pyrex container. And then after that, just spoon it out in the little dishes and put a little bit of Cool Whip. And I think you're going to find that a lot of people, because they like to have just a little bit of everything, because after all, during the holidays is when we gain a lot of weight. So having everything in moderation is the key. So if you don't want the whole crust and everything, we'll show you how to do that. Then we just spoon it in the little dishes, a little dab of whipped cream. So when you serve your desserts and everything, have some pieces of pie with the whipped cream and have some with the little dish, which is just the pie filling, the pumpkin, because Thanksgiving is not Thanksgiving without the pumpkin, right? Okay, so that way they can have their pumpkin, the traditional for Thanksgiving, and have it just in moderation. So first, we made our crust. Okay, now to make your crust, you use two cups of flour, to three-fourths cup of shortening. And then instead of using water, which a lot of people in the old days used it, I use milk because it helps to hold the dough together a lot better, easier for spreading, and it's also the milk is at the right temperature to make it just smoothen. And what I like to do with my pumpkin pie, because I like a little buttery taste, is I use the buttered flavored Crisco. Okay, because that just gives it that flavor. You know, just like if you watch some of my other videos, uh, you'll see I use different dressings for different foods. It's the same with my pies and my baked goods. Some you can use the butter flavor, and others you don't want to take the flavor away, you know, of what you're baking. So when you put your pie crust and you make it on there, make sure you tuck it in. Okay, because you don't want it, because when it cooks, it kind of like shrinks up, and you don't want air pockets, okay? So you tuck it all in, and then a lot of people will just take their knives and just cut around. Now, you don't really want to do that if you, you know, because then when you turn around and take your fork, you know, and put it in flour to go around and press, it'll be kind of flat, and it'll, pumpkin pie has to cook for a long time. So if you do that, it's going to be really flat, and your crust around the edge is going to cook too fast, okay, for the pie, uh, for the pumpkin filling, okay? So you want to leave, like, maybe a quarter of an inch around, so you can kind of tuck it to make it a little bit thicker, okay? And, oops, I forgot my milk. Now, just so you can buy a little bit of your cooking time, I use my milk and I go around. Because when it's cooking, you know, the, it's got to cook at uh, 450 degrees for about 15 minutes. And then you turn it down to, uh, well, 400 degrees is enough. Uh, then you turn it down to 350 for about 40 minutes. So there's a lot of cooking time involved. So there we go. This will buy me a little bit of time. Now a lot of people will use tin foil and kind of put it around, but a lot of times that your crust will stick to the tin foil. So I have another little tip that I use. If I do this before I bake, then about a half hour into the baking, uh, my crust is kind of starting to brown just a little bit. And we all have a frying pan that has a cover. And I put the frying pan on it. It won't stick. Your crust won't stick to it and everything because it's already been cooking for a half hour. So it kind of made its hard shell. 
just didn't totally uh, brown. And then about the last 10 minutes, I take the cover off, and then it finishes browning like this. Okay? So, let me wash my hands here. So that's my little tip for that, okay? So first, in order to do our pumpkin pie, we're going to have two large eggs. This goes so quick. I mean, you know, it's, it's so easy. You don't need to buy your pumpkin pie because this is just so, so easy to do. Now I'm going to turn around and whip that up, only because I like my eggs really mixed. It saves later on in some of the mixing. Okay, so that's nicely mixed. Three-fourths cup of sugar. Put that right in there. Ooh, don't this look nice? Almost looks like lemon meringue. Okay. Then we're going to add one can of condensed milk. I mean, this is just so easy. Now, if you don't want to make the pie crust, if you go in the um, in the area where the butter is and the croissants and the biscuits in the store, they also have those packages that have two pie crusts. Okay? So you could just roll it right out, put it in there, and this is just put it all together and throw it in the oven. Homemade. Yay! Everybody cheats. You know, when times are, are limited, especially during the holidays, and you've got to hurry up and make a pie. Or even, you know, really, when you, um, you're invited to a party and they bring a dish and somebody wants you to bring the dessert, well, two of those pie crusts and a can of cherries or apple pie filling or blueberry filling, whatever, people just cheat. Put it all together. By the time you take a shower, it's baked. So here we have a can of pumpkin, Libby. Doesn't matter which one you use. Okay, then we add our spices. For a cinnamon, we want a whole teaspoon. Love this container. Okay, for our ginger, we want a half a teaspoon. I'm part of the old day way of cooking. You know, it doesn't have to be 100% perfect. Okay. And then our cloves. All right. We'll just stir this all up. And we're almost done here. Okay, again, you bake it. I would go only 400. Kind of depends on your oven. If you have an oven that bakes really good, but if you want to be, a, you're not totally sure because you haven't baked too much, or you just moved in a new place, you don't know how the oven works, go with just the 400 for 15 minutes. Then cut it down to the 350. Make sure your oven's all preheated because the whole reason of putting it on a high speed to begin with and then cutting it down to the 350 is because what it needs to do for the rising and everything. So you don't put it in a cold oven and then turn the oven on. You want your oven all preheated. So about the time you're putting all this together after you made your crust, that's a good time to turn it on. Okay, and that's it. Pour it in there. Leave room for your whipped cream. Okay, and then the rest of this, 
I'm going to pour into my Pyrex dish because I'm going to want to make it kind of like a pudding. Now you don't want to make what's in your Pyrex dish any thicker than what your pie would be because it still has to do its rising and if you do that what you'll have is uh, cooked on the outside and not cooked in the center. So if you're not going to do it in the pie crust at all, then you'll need a bigger uh, pirate dish than this. But this is kind of equal to a one pie. Okay? That way there, it can cook uh, the same amount of time as the pie, and it'll be cooked perfect. And this is your result. Ta-da! This one's kind of had to cool down a little bit more. I just made it. But that's your pie. So... Happy Thanksgiving, everybody. Remember your neighbors, your elderly neighbors during the holiday season. Make a little extra or make an extra pie and give it to them. Okay? Bye-bye now. Happy holidays. Hello, and welcome to Doris's Kitchen. Now, today I am joined with my daughter, Jennifer, and we're going to make some turkey um, cupcakes. Okay? So first what we need to do is to take our chocolate and we melt it down in the microwave. Use a whole package of chocolate chips, put it in the microwave for about a minute, and then she'll demonstrate to you exactly how you make the feathers. All right, and this is kind of how they all look afterwards and everything. And what you'll do is you do that right on wax paper and then you stick it in the freezer. Okay, and then you put your second layer, which will be your front layer, you just kind of make like straight lines. You know, give them like little feet or whatever you want to call them. But the first layer, you make it in circles. Loops. Loops. The first loops. one is just regular chocolate, and the second one is white chocolate, which you can add either a little bit more of brown chocolate to make it look like that, or you can add food coloring to make it colored. All right, and now the next thing we'll demonstrate for you, and then you just put one there, and you'll just frosting up your cupcakes and everything. She's going to demonstrate how you make their little faces here. See, you just... Use a little bit of white frosting, you put it on there. Oops, gotta show it. Okay, and you put some little jimmies. You know how you use your Christmas jimmies right there? And then just tip the very end into your red frosting. And then just lay them right down, and there you go. You have their cute little faces. Isn't that cute? So you just use your Hersey Kisses. And then there you go. You have your nice little cupcakes right here. So, I'll turn around. And first you'll just, I have one of these that just has the chocolate frosting. You just go around like in a circle. And keep going around the circle. Go inside. Go around. When you get up to the center, kind of make it a little up, so, you know, because turkeys are not straight. There you go. And then you'll just add your feathers, your first layer of feather. comes right off the wax paper. Ooh, Ooh got a little hot. Melting. It's a little, little hot in the house. house. <laughs> uh -oh. And anyhow, this is how you end up with all your little turkeys. Mmm, they're so good, ain't they? All right, we'll have to make some more, freeze some more. And, uh, because we got 24 of these guys. <laughs>
Okay, so there you go. And this is how you make some. So do it with your family and everything. The kids can join in. Make sure that you have these all frozen already in the freezer and everything. So when you do put it, and then they can join in just eating them. And there you go. Happy little turkey and have a happy Thanksgiving, everyone. Bye-bye. Okay, welcome to Doris's Kitchen. Now today, we're making molasses cake. All right, so first ingredient. Now molasses cake, you can either do in cake form or you can do it in uh, um, cupcakes. Depending on, you know, whether you have teenagers or kids in the house and stuff, but when we were kids, it was always in a cake form, so this is what I'm going to do. I've done one batch already in uh, cupcake form, just for you. So, we're going to mix a half a cup of brown sugar. Oops, i got to get a spoon. <laughs> everything else on the table. Okay, so we have a half a cup of shortening. Okay, Whoop. one cup of molasses. And molasses is very good for you, very, very healthy. The old days they cooked an awful lot with molasses because it had a lot of value. And it still does today, only uh, the younger generation don't care so much for it. Okay, we're going to stir that up a little bit. This is start blending it. If you start early on blending it, then it makes it a little bit easier down the road as you continue with your ingredients. Okay, now we're going to add a cup of hot water. Okay, I'm going to continue to stir that. Okay, and then we have um, a teaspoon of allspice. That's just to add all the good flavors to it. Mmm. Okay, and for rising purposes and stuff, we have one teaspoon of baking soda. Now we're really getting there as far as uh, the ingredients, huh? All right, so now instead of using the spoon, when you start adding my flour, you know, you can use a mixer if you use a mixer. I'm not a mixer user. Okay, I'm gonna add two cups of flour. Stir that all up. Okay, so let's go over what we added in here. We added a half a cup of brown sugar, a half a cup of shortening, one cup of molasses, one cup of hot water, one teaspoon of allspice, one teaspoon of baking soda. Now if you only have one egg, that's okay. Because remember, you already have your baking soda, that's your rising ingredient. So if you only have one egg in the house, this is still a recipe you can make. Now you can make this either for a cake, or you can make it in cupcake. If you go the cake form, it's you bake, of course, at 350 degrees for about 35 minutes. Now learn your oven. If you're doing cupcakes, you still bake at uh, 350, but you only go like 20 minutes, okay? 
and double check it at 20 minutes because depending on your oven and stuff and the way to check is just put your toothpick in the center of a cupcake. If nothing sticks to the toothpick, you're good. Okay, so if you got young kids and stuff, you can turn around and uh, frost them, then then they won't know no different. But molasses, the ingredient in here, is really good for blood pressure. Okay, it's also very good, you know when you get the muscle cramps in the back of your legs? Well, this was like an old time remedy that they used in the old days. Okay, you got a lot of cramps because they worked hard in the woods and outside and people worked a lot harder so they had a lot of cramps in their legs and stuff like that. So their spouse or whatever would cook up something with molasses. Of course every Saturday night you had your baked beans, you definitely had your molasses there. But it's really good for molasses and stuff. It's also really good for uh, potassium. So, you know, people who have high blood pressure, sometimes your blood pressure medication, because they didn't know everything in the old days, um, would take potassium from your body. I've been through it. So, uh, it's also good for potassium. And of course, the molasses is high with iron. So this is really healthy and really, really good. Okay, so see how easy it is to make a molasses cake? Now if you want to when you're done, when you bake it and everything, you can frosten it up for people who need to take care of that sweet tooth, even though molasses is a sweetener all by itself. You can add frosting to it. Uh, if you like raisins, and if you're able to have walnuts or whatever, you can add that to it and add whatever you want to it for extra. Okay, or you can leave it like that, slice it up, serve it with some uh, whipped cream, and there you go. So you can do it in cupcake form or you can do it in cake form. And this is very healthy for you. Okay, I hope you've enjoyed my uh, baking with you today. Bye-bye now. Okay, and welcome to Grandma's Kitchen. Yep. All right, today what we're doing is some no-bake uh, cookies. Okay, pour that one inside here. And we got little Kara here to help us. Oh, that, wow, that's one-fourth cup of cocoa. Okay, you wait, you need to get her glasses on. Hello. Yeah, I can't we're going to do this. Okay, now we need one cup of sugar. Want me to pour it in? Yep. Okay, mix it up. Okay, and now we're going to add one-fourth cup of milk. Can you mix it up? Okay. And then we're going to put one fourth uh, of butter, which is really a half a stick of butter. Okay. So, so far what we've done is one fourth cocoa, one fourth milk, and one fourth butter, and one cup of sugar. Now what we need to do with this is to heat it up on the stove just a little bit more than your medium and bring it to a boil. It needs to boil one whole minute. So you put it on there for one whole minute. Okay. So Mimi's going to cook that, but while Mimi cooks that, we are going to add the next batch. Oops, wait a minute, I gotta get a spoon. Okay, while I have that going and stuff, what we have here is one fourth cup of peanut butter. Another one fourth measure. Okay, we put the peanut butter. So this is really good, it's no bake, except for the part you have to warm up, which is not a baking. 
Okay, and then we're going to add one and three-fourths cup of oats. Okay, mix that all up. And Mimi will go and cook this up. Be careful. Here we are. All right, now you gotta watch out because Mimi's gotta pour this in. So back up a little bit, okay? Because we don't want Tara to get hurt. Pour this all in. So this is a really, really simple uh, thing to make with the kids and stuff. And it's got peanut butter and everything, so it's good. The chocolate's good. Okay, we got to mix it up real fast. Because it gets cold real fast, huh? Okay, and this is really good, you know, especially like when you have teenagers who late for the bus, they can grab one of these because it's got oaks, which is really good. It holds in the tummy. It's also very good for the colon. For those of you who are older, because this is not just for kids. But it's got peanut butter for high protein. It's got all the oats. Got it? Okay, maybe we'll take this other spoon then. Okay. There you go. And it's always good to cook with the little ones. Get them used to cooking. And then what you do is you just place it by teaspoons on your cookie sheet. Oh, wait a minute, wait a minute. Maybe we'll do this part, okay? Grab a big spoon like this. Oh, wait a minute. Drop it all in one spot. Okay, we'll call this Kara spot. Okay, and then you just let it cool down. Put it right here, honey. There we go. Put them all together. There you go. Oh, wait a minute, wait a minute. Make another spot. Need a little bit more for that one. Whoa. Okay, wait one minute. You're going too fast. Going too fast, honey. Okay, let Mimi do it because i got to shape them up. Now, you just keep stirring it and Mimi will get it when Mimi needs it. Okay, kind of make them a little bit round as best as you can. Flatten them a little bit. Oh, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Don't do that. You just keep stirring in the bowl. Mimi will do this part. Stir the bowl up while Mimi gets them, okay? I'll take just a little one. Oh, oh. We'll take it all the way over here. Ooh. Okay. And then after that, you just wait for them to cool. Uh, a lot of people will. Yeah, this one needs a little bit more. Here you go. Ooh, don't get your hands all full of chocolate, huh? Yum, yum. Okay, I'm going to turn this around here. Oh. oh. Wait a minute, wait a minute. Okay, you got to find a good spot to put them in. Wow. Okay, wait a minute. Ah, Kara, 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 wait one minute. No, when you're doing it with kids, it doesn't matter where it ends up on the sheet as long as there's a little separation between them. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah, but when they eat, yeah. there's going to be no separation between them. <laughs> they all going to become one. Hey. In my belly. <laughs> oh, Uncle Chief's going to eat them all. I'm like a cookie monster. <laughs> oh, no. We remember that video. <laughs> okay, wait a minute, wait a minute. Put it right here. Okay, it needs some more. Ooh. Put yours right here. There we go. Okay, okay, wait a minute. Get some more. It needs more. Yeah, okay. You wait one minute. Mimi's going to turn around and scrape up the fish. Because we don't waste none of that, huh? Mm. Nothing, nothing. We don't waste nothing that good. 
<laughs> these are good. The people really, really love them, especially the teenagers. But it's also very good and healthy for the little ones if you can get them going on it. Well, chocolate, you know. Well, it's got the protein, it's got the oatmeal. Yeah, it'll help care put weight on. Yep. Oh, okay, I'm not going back in that dish now. What'd she do? And <laughs> she spit out the oatmeal. <laughs> <laughs> hey, the one thing that you thought was healthy for her, she spit out. <laughs> okay, so this won't be her favorite, but it's her mommy's favorite. All right, and there you go. We just got to put them in the refrigerator, let them cool down and stop. And this, of course, is some of the goodies. Okay, it's made with the oatmeal, one cup of sugar, one-fourth cup of cocoa, one-fourth cup of milk, one-fourth cup of butter. And you take those ingredients, boil them up for one minute. Then you add it to the one-fourth peanut butter and one and three-fourths cup of oats. And these are the nice treats you have. All right. Say bye-bye to the camera. Bye, Oh, yeah. And real quick. <laughs> Yummy. Okay. Bye-bye. All right, everybody, this is the easiest 4th of July dessert you could ever make. So simple, it's not even funny. So if you're busy preparing your meats and salads and everything, and you go, oh my, I need a dessert, don't have time to bake, this is the easiest put together thing for dessert that you could ever make. All you need is to buy a few of those uh, little uh, shortcake uh, from the bakery, just the little shells, the shortcake shells. You buy that, you get yourself a bag of strawberries, frozen strawberries, or pick them fresh if you happen to have them in your backyard, if you're planting it. If you don't, hey, pick it up frozen, pick up some blueberries frozen, and then put it right together. This way here, you have a traditional 4th of July dessert, red, white, and blue. Red for the strawberries, blue for the blueberries, and the white, of course, is the whipped cream. So this is the easiest 4th of July dessert you could ever make. Bye-bye. Okay, and welcome to Grandma's Kitchen. Yep. All right, today what we're doing is some no-bake uh, cookies. Okay. Pour that one inside here. And we got little Kara here to help us. Ooh, all that. Wow, that's one fourth cup of cocoa. Okay, you wait. You need to get her glasses on. Uh -huh. Yeah, Kara's gonna do this. Okay, now we need one cup of sugar. Want me to pour it in? Yep. Okay, mix it up. Okay, and now we're going to add one-fourth cup of milk. Okay. Ooh, can you mix it up? Okay, and then we're going to put one-fourth uh, of butter, which is really a half a stick of butter. Okay, so, so far what we've done is one-fourth cocoa, one-fourth milk, and one-fourth butter and one cup of sugar. Now what we need to do with this is to heat it up on the stove just a little bit more than your medium and bring it to a boil. It needs to boil one whole minute. So you put it on there for one whole minute. Okay. So Mimi's going to cook that, but while Mimi cooks that, we are going to add the next batch. Oops, wait a minute, i got to get a spoon. Okay, while I have that going and stuff, what we have here is one-fourth cup of peanut butter. Another one-fourth measure. Okay, we put the peanut butter. So this is really good. It's no bake. Except for the part you have to warm up, which is not a baking. Okay, and then we're going to add one and three-fourths cup of oats. 
Okay, mix that all up. And Mimi will go and cook this up. Be careful. Here we are. All right, now you gotta watch out because Mimi's gotta pour this in. So back up a little bit. Okay, because we don't want Tara to get hurt. Pour this all in. So this is a really, really simple uh, thing to make with the kids and stuff. And it's got peanut butter and everything, so it's good. Chocolate's good. Okay, we got to mix it up real fast. Because it gets cold real fast, huh? Okay, and this is really good, you know, especially like when you have teenagers who late for the boss, they can grab one of these because it's got oaks, which is really good. It holds in the tummy. It's also very good for the colon, for those of you who are older, because this is not just for kids. But it's got peanut butter for high protein. It's got all the oats. Got it? Okay, maybe we'll take this other spoon then. Okay. There you go. And it's always good to cook with the little ones. Get them used to cooking. And then what you do is you just place it by teaspoons on your cookie sheet. Oh, wait a minute, wait a minute. Mimi will do this part, okay? Grab a big spoon like this. Oh, wait a minute. Drop it all in one spot. Okay, we'll call this Kara spot. Okay, and then you just let it cool down. Right here, honey. There we go. Put them all together. There you go. Oh, wait a minute, wait a minute. Make another spot. Need a little bit more for that one. Whoa. Okay, wait one minute. You're going too fast. Going too fast, honey. Okay, let Mimi do it because i got to shape them up. You just keep stirring it, and Mimi will get it when Mimi needs it. Okay, kind of make them a little bit round as best as you can. Flatten them a little bit. Oh, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Don't do that. You just keep stirring in the bowl. Mimi will do this part. Stir the bowl up while Mimi gets them, okay? I'll take this little one. Oh, oh. We'll take it all the way over here. Ooh. Okay. And then after that, you just wait for them to cool. Uh, a lot of people will. Yeah, this one needs a little bit more. Here you go. Ooh, don't get your hands all full of chocolate, huh? Yum, yum. Okay, I'm going to turn this around here. Oh. Wait a minute, wait a minute. Okay, you gotta find a good spot to put them in. Wow. Okay, wait a minute. Ah, Kara, 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 wait one minute. It's not when you're doing it with kids, it doesn't matter where it ends up on the sheet as long as there's a little separation between them. When they eat, and there's gonna be no separation between them. <laughs> they all become one in my belly. <laughs> oh, Uncle Chief's gonna eat them all. I'm like the Cookie Monster. <laughs> oh no, we remember that video. <laughs> okay, wait a minute, wait a minute. Put it right here. Okay, need some more. Ooh. Put yours right here. There we go. Okay, okay, wait a minute, get some more. It needs more. Yeah, okay. You wait one minute, Mimi gonna turn around and scrape up the fish. Because we don't waste none of that, huh? Mm. Nothing, nothing. We don't waste nothing that good. <laughs> These are good. They, people really, really love them, especially the teenagers. But it's also very good and healthy for the little ones if you can get them going on it. 
Well, you know, chocolate, you know. Well, it's got the protein, it's got the oatmeal. Yeah. It'll help care put weight on. Yep. Oh, okay, I'm not going back in that dish now. What'd she do? And <laughs> she spit out the oatmeal. <laughs> <laughs> hey, the one thing she thought was healthy for her, she spit out. <laughs> okay, so this won't be her favorite, but it's her mommy's favorite. All right, and there you go. We just got to put them in the refrigerator, let them cool down, and stop. And this, of course, is some of the goodies. Okay, it's made with the oatmeal, one cup of sugar, one-fourth cup of cocoa, one-fourth cup of milk, one-fourth cup of butter. And you take those ingredients, boil them up for one minute, then you add it to the one-fourth peanut butter and one and three-fourths cup of oats. And these are the nice treats you have. All right, say bye-bye to the camera. Bye-bye, Oh, yeah, and real quick. <laughs> Yummy. Okay, bye-bye. Hello and welcome to Doris's Kitchen. Okay, today we're going to be making some sugar cookies with little smiles and everything. So first we want to show you Kara's little apron. So Kara and Mimi have matching aprons. Yeah, if you show the camera your pretty apron. Come here. See, look. See, we got a little ruffle at the bottom to look real pretty as we cook. All right, so we're making sugar cookies today. So first thing we need is a cup and a half of white sugar. Okay, then we're going to add two, uh, one cup of butter, which is two sticks of butter, because each one is a half. Add our one egg. Then we want a teaspoon, oops, a teaspoon of vanilla for us. All right, you gotta get off the table though, because we're gonna have to roll that up. Come a little bit closer. You guys start stirring this up, okay? And then we want a teaspoon of baking uh, soda, baking soda, and a teaspoon of cream of tart. Those are pretty much the liquid kind of ingredients. Yeah, you gotta mix that all up, just like that. Okay, now first you want to turn around and mix all these up really good because you need your butter to be all mixed with the sugar and everything before you add your flour just to get everything uh, mixed up nice. Makes it easier when you add your flour so everything's properly proportioned. Yeah. Okay. butter and sugar and everything is all kind of mixed. So, and we're going, whoops, easy. Two and a half cups of flour. Wait a minute, gotta get big scoops all the way. One, two, okay, now this one only halfway. you're going to do with that is just mix it up. Okay, so let's go through these ingredients again. One and a half cup of sugar, one cup of butter, which is two sticks, one egg, a teaspoon of vanilla, a teaspoon of baking soda, teaspoon of cream of tart, 
Okay, and mix that all up. Then you add your two and a half cups of flour. Okay, then what you have to do is put this in the refrigerator for um, at least two hours. Then you'll bake at 375 for about eight minutes. Yeah. So, let's move some of this. Whoops! Rolling pin kind of went. Okay, now I'm going to have to roll some of this out. I already made some previously. On the chair, on the chair honey. Because then you're going to help me cut the circles. Okay? Okay, back up because we're going to need some room. Go. Make sure you flour this really good. Flour the rolling pin. Yeah, and you do it. Now you can go a uh, fourth of an inch, you can go thinner. It depends on your likes and dislikes. Hey. And as a cook, you can always eat when you're cooking, right? <laughs> That's part of being a cook. Okay, whoops. Sorry. Yeah, I'm not gonna. Okay, so flour your little uh, cutter. Now, if you don't have a cutter, you can always use a glass. Just make sure you flour it. Okay, get this one to mommy to put on the cookie sheet. Thank you. Here's another one. See, that's why you have an apron, because you always wipe up. You want to come cut one? Come. Put a circle in there. Oh, well, let's try another one. Let's try another one. That one didn't go good. Press hard, press down. There you go. Good enough. That's right. Here you go. Go put it on the cookie sheet. Put it right here, baby. Right there. All right. Good job. That was cool. All right. You want to come try another one? Here. Press down. First you have to press down. Then you shake it up. Okay. There you go. And you got another one, Mom. Yeah, give those to mommy too. Okay. Put them right there. And then right here. Right here. Yep. Perfect. Okay, don't smush it. Right there. Give those to mommy. Okay. And what we're going to have. Okay, don't smush it. Thank you. Oh, no, that one wasn't a good one. That'll be redone. Yeah. Go like this. Here, press down first. Press down. First you press down, then you shake it up. Okay? Good press job. down first, then shake it up. Perfect. Yeah. All right, good enough. Okay, now wait a minute. Mommy's going to show you how to give them little hats. Oh, come here. Come over Good here memory. now. Yep. Here. Okay. Mommy, give this. Go with Mommy. Give them all a little hat. All right. Let's take them all and put them on top, just like that. Okay. And all you do for that yeah. one is, one. okay, all the way to the top, is you just add some food color right. when you mix your dough and everything, here. either red top or green. Hat. And then mark your cutter one third, and that's what makes the little hats and everything. And then you add some eyeballs, and we have right here some little lips. Yes. Yep. 
little X, you gotta make it go around. Boy, you look like you got flour all around your mouth. Yeah, she touched the flour and then the animals. Yeah. <laughs> all, 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 okay. Oh, okay. Okay. Mama, Mama needs to help you do that. We're gonna make it a smile, just like that. Oh, you wanna put yeah. this one right here? All together. Yay! Okay, let me do it. I'll put it right there. Together. Put it all together right there. Yay! Okay, now you gotta give them a red nose. I'll get one red. Mama, show her where the little red nose goes. It goes right in the middle. There yep. you go. Perfect. Go ahead and do another one. Right in the middle, right here. Yep, perfect. Good job. Hey, girls. Mama. Okay, because we're making another bash, we're going to... Make some more no, little nothing. hats here. And again, you just roll it right out. The eyes go in the middle of the little dudes. Okay. Uh, right there, at the top. Okay. Now Perfect. to turn around and do the hats and everything, we're going to put a straight right. line first. You need a nose right here. In the middle. Because we need a straight line. Right there. And then nope, no more of those. Just put right there where they need to be. In the middle. Yep. Go. Now we need another one right here in the middle. Okay, Carol. And here you go. You That's how that? easy you do that. You make green ones, you make red ones. And just level it back off again. No, we don't need another straight. Hat. Okay. And remember you cook this at 375. For about in the middle, eight minutes. Gently. Okay, right you there, know your oven better than anybody right else, middle. so. All right. right there in the middle. And we'll give some more circles to finish that. Okay. Carry on. Okay. Now another one. There you go. Right here. All right. And there we have our sugar cookies. Oh, you're going to have to spread them a, a, a little bit more yeah, away from she's... each other. Okay. Because uh, when it cooks, they really spread out. Okay, you lightly grease uh, your cookie sheet when you're doing this. Uh, you may think because you use all that butter, you don't need to, but you need to just a little bit, very lightly, not heavy. Yeah. Extremely light. Okay, that just makes for easier hey. taking out afterwards. Okay, did you need some more hats? Because yeah. Mimi's got some some more hats here. Or do you have enough? Oh, oh you got enough good. hats. Good. Now some of them, once you get the nose all in, some of them need blue eyes and some of them need brown eyes. So now you're going to have to give them blue eyes. Okay? They need two eyes. <laughs> Okay, so get the kids involved into cooking and baking, especially during the holiday season. Okay. Then everybody Perfect. gets to share their good work. All right, one right there and one right there. Oh. You can have some blue eyes. They're a little okay. bit spaced out, but... Yeah, <laughs> and then you just sprinkle a little bit of sugar on top of that. Yeah, that's a baker. Did you see how she just wiped on her Hi. apron? Yeah, some brown eyes. There you go. Give some brown eyes. There you go. All right. So this is how what you end up with for sugar cookies. And stuff. <laughs> one has brown, one has blue. Okay. Oh, and now we're making. Oh, too many, too many. You can also just make circles and then just fill it with a bunch of M and M's or whatever, because kids like that too. Only two eyes. Make sure they only have two eyes, because you only have two eyes, right? One. Two. You can count one, two, right? Hi, huh, Kara? Yeah. Say one, one two. two. One, two, one, two. Oh, oh. Yeah, you have three there. <laughs> okay. All right. Say bye-bye right, to the camera. Ones. Say bye-bye to the camera, Kara. Bye-bye, Yeah. Over here. 
Hello and welcome to Doris's Kitchen. Today we're cooking with Grandma. Say hi, Kara. Hey, this is Kara. Say hi. And what we're making today is peanut butter um, cookies with a kiss. All right. You can use plain peanut butter or you can use the chunky. I'm going to use the chunky peanut butter today because I like the combination of uh, the peanuts with the chocolate. And this is what we're going to have when we're done. Okay? So, first we're going to add our half a cup of white sugar. Yay! Okay, half a cup of brown sugar. Go ahead, put this one in. going to add our half a cup of shortening. Oh, this one made me do it with the spoon. There, got it? Yay! Okay, and a half a cup of peanut butter. And of course, I've used the chunky one. Yay! We got our chunky peanut butter. Okay, chunky, yes, chunky. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, and then we're going to do our, well, we'll do our egg first. One egg. Yay. All right. Three fourths of a teaspoon of the um, baking soda. This one in. And only a half of the uh, baking powder, half a teaspoon. See how little that is? Okay. Then we're going to add a dash of salt. Here's a dash. Now the first thing we're going to do is mix these ingredients before we add the flour. Okay, come here. <laughs> I knew you'd go after that. 
Yeah, we're going to put those in the middle. Okay. Yeah. All right. So this is how it looks. All balled up. Okay, now come. you got to help me make some balls. Go ahead and finish eating your chocolate. Okay. Then we take a little bit like this, and we roll it like this and make a ball. Roll it into a ball. Oh, a big ball. A ball like this one. Okay. Go ahead. Make them into a ball. Just like that. It's not working? Okay, wait a minute. Let me show you how to make one. Okay. This much. Okay, now go like this. Real easy. Real easy like that. See, you go real easy. Not hard, because when you go hard, you got crumbs. So you go real easy. Okay, you want to try one by yourself? Yeah, roll it real easy. Easy, don't make them flat. You can make them round like a ball. Go easy. See? When you get used to it, then you can go faster like Lumi does. Not working out? You want me to help you some more? Okay, I'll make the balls and you can put them on the on the cookie sheet. How's that? This one needs a little bit more. Put them on the cookie sheet. Okay, watch me make it. See, you go like that real easy. So it's a ball, okay? Here, now I want you to try again. You try. Make them a ball. Let me put them all separated. Okay. How about if I give you the other job? Come on that next chair. Come on the next chair and maybe give you this job. Come on the next chair. Go on that chair. Okay. Now you take one, put it down in the middle like that and squeeze it all the way to the bottom. Maybe you can do that job. There you go. Good girl. All right. Do all of them. They all need one little kiss. Say a kiss from Kara. Oh, easy, easy, easy. Oh. Okay. You did say all the way to the bottom. I know. <laughs> I did. <laughs> okay, good, good. Okay. But the whole thing about this dough, and it's easy to work with, is you can patch it up after. Everybody needs a kiss from Kara. Yeah, you patch that up, make it right in the middle. And it cooks. Okay, yeah, they all need one. There we go. And we'll give everybody a kiss from Kara for Christmas. How's that? Oh. Alright, Mimi needs one more ball down here. Yeah. Doing a good job. Okay, yeah, Mimi fixed that. Yeah, my job, huh? My job to fix it. Yeah, and these are some of our Christmas cookies. And she can give some to Daddy. Huh? Yeah. yeah, oh, there's one left just for you. How's that? Because you did such a good job, you get to eat that one. All right, there you go. Isn't it fun to cook? Because whenever you, you're the cook, you get to eat while you cook, huh? Here we go. Now we're going to cook these at 375. As a rule of thumb, when you're making cookies, usually it's at 375. There we go. A few more here to level on. Okay, you want to say, oh, you want to put that back? Yeah, so you don't slip and fall, huh? Okay. 
All right. Mama drinks. Oh, she needs a drink after all that chocolate. Yes, sir. Gotta have that drink, huh? Yeah. Okay. Have a drink. There we go. Hmm. Only different cup. And nothing needs to be perfect when you're baking with little ones. Yeah. It's them being active and participating in the baking for the holiday season. Oh, easy. Mimi already put them right. He was okay now. Okay, now we're going to say bye-bye and show them. There we go. Then we bake them. 375 for 10 minutes. Bye bye, bye camera. Bye. 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 Say Merry Christmas to everybody. Okay, say Merry Christmas. Can you say the words? Okay, Merry Christmas, everybody. Bye bye. No, no. Bye bye, Christmas. Oh, she said it. That's cute. Thank you, dear. Bye bye. Okay, and welcome to Doris's Kitchen. Here we have a very quick, quick uh, idea for a dessert. If you have to make something, you want to be a little bit fancy, last minute, didn't know someone was coming over, well, this is one of those, okay? I started with putting whipped cream down at the bottom, the first layer. And then, you know, everybody likes the chocolate cream pie. Then you always have the whipped cream on top. So we have our chocolate in the middle. Buy uh, one of those instant chocolate puddings. So always have stuff like that handy in the cupboards. So you have your whipped cream. You have your chocolate pudding. And then you have the strawberry pie filling. So we put a, a layer of whipped cream, layer of chocolate pudding, layer of strawberry pie filling. Then we put some more whipped cream. Now on top of that, for those of you who like, you can top it with, uh, you know, things you have around the house. You can chop nuts, what I'm doing for this one. A little bit of chopped nuts here, a little bit of chopped nuts there, and stuff. Oh, let's give it a little bit more. You know, make it different if you know what people like. Go ahead and try that. Okay, here I have some blueberries that were frozen and stuff, thawed them out. So I'll put a little dab of blueberries on top for a few of these, just to make it different. And if you have the super chocolate uh, people, you know, who are addicted to chocolate, Oh, a few little kisses, chocolate kisses on there. You know, from when you make uh, chocolate chip cookies. Just throw a few of them. Okay, so this is just some last minute uh, put together. You know, to still look like you put time into it to entertain and everything. And on these here with the uh, nuts and stuff, if you want, you can also add a little chocolate on top of there. There you go. So there's just some quick little ideas. Okay, so all it is is add your whipped cream, then add your chocolate pudding, then a strawberry, because you know chocolate and strawberries always go good together. So you get that nice flavor. And when you have a strawberry shortcake, it's always the strawberries and then the whipped cream. So it's like having strawberry shortcake with a chocolate cream pie. There you go. Add some nuts on it, add some blueberries, add some chocolate chips, you know, and you have yourself put it in a fancy little dish. So it looks like you're doing some fancy entertaining. So there you go for something quick and delicious to go with your meal. Bye-bye now. All right, welcome to Doris's Kitchen. And today we're going to do my version of a creamsicle cake. Have you ever turned around and just watched uh, a video and said, wow, I wonder if I can do it? Well, this is it. I've never done this before. It's the first time, and I want to see if I can do it. Now, when I've done my jello, these two are jellos, I use the same size, 
the same uh, containers, uh, the two round cake containers and stuff, uh, that I was going to make my cake with and everything to make my jello so it should fit perfectly the right size. So we're going to start. Uh, so you just get one of those, ooh, it's not going to slide off as easy as I thought. Maybe I can just tip it. There you go. Great. Okay. Uh, so we've done a, a package of jello pudding and then we made a package of the vanilla pudding. Now when I did the jello pudding, I used a cup and a half of the hot water instead of the two cups that they asked and a cup and a half of the cold water because I wanted it more gel and stuff. But when I did the, uh, the pudding, I did exactly as recommended, the three cups of cold uh, milk. Okay, so you're just going to spoon half of this on here or close to it, whatever looks good. It will overlap because that's what's going to make it delicious. This is a lot more nutritious than the frosting and stuff. Okay. And on the cake, you get a regular yellow cake mix, and you divide it into three. You don't have to be perfect to make sure it's exactly the right size and stuff. If you have one that ends up a little bit thicker, you'll want to turn around and... Uh, Put that one on the bottom so when you do slice it up. Yes, thank you. Oh, it split a little bit right there. Okay. See how easy this is? Uh, you do the jello the night before, and then you do the, uh, the cake the day of when you're going to be serving it. For me, this is the dessert that goes to a thank you dinner. Whoa! Okay. Careful on how you handle that. It's definitely going to have to sit. That really slid. Okay. Uh, this is going to be part of a... Wow, I've seen this on there. Boy, it didn't look like this. Hmm. Okay. Uh, let me wipe my hands. I do this. But anyhow, I had someone come and help me to uh, put in my wood stove. So as a thank you, like they did in the old days, it was an exchange in services. So I'm putting together a dinner. Okay, let me get another spoon. Let's try that out. Hurry up and put this in the refrigerator so that the pudding uh, can get cold and that'll stop the sliding. Sure looks different than the one they made that I've seen on the computer. Mmm. Ah, it's all about trial and error. I think once the pudding thickens, It'll hold better. Because yeah, the pudding is cold. Maybe I should let the pudding get cold. I always have to try things. I was so proud of getting the jello right and for it to come right out of the container. Uh, I greased the bottom of the jello pan just a little bit. Okay. And now I'm going to sprinkle some walnuts on top just to add more color. And then we added some brine from the uh, orange because it's supposed to be, I didn't grind up as well as I expected, but hey, whoa. Okay, this layer right there, it's not staying still. There, behave. Okay, now I'm going to put some leaf here. And 
can, stick a few oranges right in there. All right, now I gotta hurry up, put that in so that the pudding does its job. And uh, looks really pretty, looks delicious. Uh, some of that will go into the moisture of it and everything. And then the, uh, you get the jello, the pudding, you have it all. Okay, so that's how you do a creamsicle cake. I'll put it in the refrigerator, and as soon as the pudding takes hold, this should be really, really good. All right, so bye-bye now. Hope you've enjoyed watching this be made for the first time, firsthand, right on that. <laughs> okay, and know that, you know, when you turn around and you have people who do favors for you, uh, go ahead, put them a meal together as a thank you, even though they're friends and stuff, because that's what makes lasting friends. Some of the ideas that you've learned from the old days. Okay, bye-bye now.